If you've watched my videos, then you know I'm a big fan of soft water conditioning to help protect the fixtures and plumbing of an RV. In addition to that, it just makes it feel good on your skin and it helps to make the soap go further. But today, I want to show you an extra measure to help protect not only the plumbing, but your health as well. So please, stick around. Hi friends, thanks for watching RV Squared. I'm Steve Vance. You all know that soft water conditioning is super important to help protect the plumbing, scaling of your fixtures, as well as making your laundry soap go further, making the soap feel better on your skin. So there's a lot of benefits to having a soft water conditioner in your RV. But today I want to tell you something that I've been testing along with a friend of mine, Tim Beatty. We've been talking about a three-stage water filter and I am going to show you how to make one of your own and the benefits of that. So let's first of all talk about soft water. Now I have the on-the-go soft water conditioner. It's the scuba tank size version. So it gets me uh, probably a few months. It really depends on how hard the water is of your inlet. So what I'm going to show you right now is this test that you use a stick to test your water hardness and you'll see here that I'm up here in the oh about the 180 range so you just dip it in the water and you're going to take a reading within a few seconds so that means I've got to dump salt into my conditioner and you take two pounds of table salt you pour it down the top and you let it flush for about 20 to 30 minutes now some people are concerned with the salt content in their water and I've never been concerned about that. The, the trace amounts of salt left behind after you do a complete and thorough flushing with that salt is absolutely minimal. If you feel like you're at risk for this, then by all means, test your water after you do this. Consult your own physician. But with all the research I've done, I am totally comfortable drinking the water that comes out of a soft water conditioner. Besides the fact, a lot of times we're actually using purified water from a bottle or I'll actually use this spigot here, which purifies the water even further. Now, keep in mind, as we fill our tank, we're going to be putting soft water in our tank. So, in this particular coach, this system goes through another two-stage filter in addition to the soft water tank and what I'm going to show you later is the three-stage filter. So let's go outside and I'm going to show you what I have. This is the system that I like to use. You all know I'm a big fan of Quick Connects. Uh, right now I'm testing these new Quick Connects, which are, are a little bit different design. They've got an O-ring in here. So instead of the butt end of the inlet pressing up against a washer and depending on pressure to go and seal that surface of the washer, this particular model is all brass and it has an O-ring. So when you connect it, it seals with an O-ring rather than a washer up here. Um, in the past, I've liked to keep the water off, but I'm going to discuss a certain technique with you that requires you to keep the water on, if not all the time, at least longer. Without further ado, used to use a soft water conditioner. I still do, but what I want to do is I actually want a three-stage filter. And the reason why I want a three-stage filter is I want to try to get out all the other sediment, the rust, the iron, all the other particulates. I want to get the microorganisms and any other contaminant even after it goes through the soft water tank. So my theory is this, is I don't know what's in this tank, but I do know these three stages of filters will filter out any residue, garbage, microorganisms, or whatever. So why not put it after the soft water tank as it's the last thing before the water goes into your coach. So it's real simple. With these quick connects, I've got a regulator on the post that I'll explain to you in a minute why I do and it has a quick connect on it as well. So I merely attach the soft water tank to the regulator and then I take my quick connect pigtail from my three stage and I run it right into the output of the soft water conditioner. And my current configuration that I like has this short pigtail pre-connected and it's a fixed connection. It's not quick connect. And I like that because it just makes it that much cleaner of a connection. And when I go to grab these, 
I already know I've got to disconnect the quick connect. This one takes a little bit more thinking because I've got quick connects on both sides. The reason why I have quick connects on both sides is this fitting has to come off when you do routine back flushing. So I have a, a double female that goes on to a quick connect so I can come on here and back flush it the other way. So I have to keep these on a quick connect. So that's the, that's the hookup, super easy incredibly fast. I took a couple of wire ties and I put a bungee cord on here and this is really handy for me. Not only does it make it super easy to carry but it makes it really nice because I can connect it just about to anything. I can loop it around the post, I can fasten it, I can keep it from tipping over. Let's talk about this filter system. This is really easy to put together yourself and I'm going to leave a link for each of these products in the description section and you can use those Amazon links to get your own system and it takes oh I don't know maybe a half hour at the most to put together it took me a whole lot more to find the right products than it did to actually put them together there's a the fitting for the inlet you've got three canisters that are all the same they're clear so you can see the actual sediment that's collecting inside some people will go as so far as to putting a tap in here and they'll put a pressure gauge on each of it I, I don't think that's necessary personally I just look at it and I go with you know three to six months it just really depends on how much junk you're filtering out of the water. And you'll know because the flow is really going to start dropping down when this starts getting a lot of uh, sediment accumulated. So three stages, there's a, not a lot of debate, but there are different ways you can put this together. I have a pre-filter here. So this is just a coarse cotton filter, so to speak. And then I have a one micron and then I have a 0.5 micron. Now you could get a 10, a 5, and a 0.5. You could get a a 5, a 1, and a 0.5. How you actually set this up is a little bit of an experiment as well as personal preference, but 0.5 microns is kind of the, uh, if you want, the industry standard for filtering out all things including Giardia and all sorts of cysts and, and you know bad stuff that you don't really want in your tank. This three-stage water filter and soft water tank, it's not designed to be your deionized water filter for spot free rinsing. The design of this is to filter out those microorganisms that you don't want to ingest. So let's give this a little bit of a test and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This is a TDS meter, it's super cheap. You can get them for anywhere from six to 13 bucks. I'm gonna bleed off a little bit of this pressure so I don't get completely soaked. All right, we're gonna fill this water up. Now, that's coming directly off of the city water supply. So it's not going through any of the filters. Let's turn the meter on. It's at zero. And let's give it a shot here. And it's sitting right at about, we'll call it, we'll call it 196. So that's 196. Now that's what the city supply is. So let's turn that off and let's see if we can break this connection without getting completely soaking wet. I'm gonna bleed a little bit of this pressure off. That should be enough. All right, there we go. So let me fill this up with filtered water. So this is the water that's coming out of the soft water into the three-stage filter. Take the hold off. We're at zero again. And let's give it a reading. So you can see it's at 214. So it really didn't make any appreciable difference in the actual particulate filtering, but what it did do is it's getting out all those invisible organisms that you don't want in your system, let alone drink. So the other thing I want to talk about is what it's filtering. As you know, the soft water tank is responsible for getting rid of that calcium and magnesium, which causes that hard water deposits. But the other problem that's been happening, and I've spoken to at least probably three or four coach owners in the last month and they've had significant plumbing problems. Anything from reduced water pressure in their shower, one person didn't have their toilets flushing, one unfortunate gentleman actually had a complete blockage in his lavatory sink, and guess what these were all caused by? Sediments from the city water supply goes right into their tank and their coach unfiltered, and then that water pump throws it right into your coach. All that sediment gets stuck at the end point be it a screen or a shower mixer valve, they have very small ports and screens in there. And boy, I'm telling you, once you get junk in your system, 
it's really a bear to get rid of it because it's not only in your tank, it's throughout your plumbing and it's going to jam up at those endpoints and you're going to be in for a lot of misery. At the least, you're going to have reduced water pressure in your shower. You're going to have an imbalance of hot or cold water because that shower mixer valve needs to have equal supply from both sides. Or in worst case scenario, your toilet's not going to flush because your valve is stuck in there or your faucet may not work at all. And the reason why is that sediment on some of these valves and diaphragms gets in there and it inhibits that diaphragm from doing its job and turning that, in this case, a toilet on or off. So you may have anything from a toilet not flushing or more realistic, it'll flush and it won't stop. So this will stop that from happening. It, it will not let any of that damaging sediment through your system. So if nothing else, you need to run this. And you know those small little pre-filters, they don't do the job and they wear out really fast. You've got to understand that one small pre-filter, it's going to clog up instantly. It's not going to filter out all that stuff. It's better than nothing, but most people keep them too long, me included, and it doesn't do a good job. The water flow is, is not restricted that much on this, but what I have is a regulator that is set super low. Now, once again, shout out to Tim Beatty because the concept on the way this particular coach is plumbed is that the water from the city, if it overcomes a check valve on the coach, our belief is that it'll bypass that water pump and it'll just go directly into the coach. And we don't really want that because this particular coach, it's a Newell coach, it has a high pressure headhunter water pump. It'll really give you outstanding pressure throughout your coach. But here's the problem. If you feed it city water supply through this filter system and that water supply pressure goes above the lower threshold of your headhunter pump, that headhunter pump will never kick on. So you'll be left with a dismal 25 or 30 pounds of pressure indefinitely until you turn your water supply off. Or you use a regulator to drop that pressure down below that lower limit all the time. So I've done that. I've set it down all the way to 15 pounds because I don't need to have high pressure coming from my water supply. What I want is just a nice slow trickle into my pump and let the pump boost all the pressure. And it really works well. Uh, it takes a little bit of experiment and different coaches respond differently. But some coaches, if you had city water supply come in, it would actually go past a check valve and basically gate past the pump system and it would go directly in your coach. So coaches, even though they're plumbed a little bit differently and they have different hardware, they all will have the same symptom, which is if you've got dismal water pressure at the city supply side and it hasn't been low enough to kick your water pump on, you're gonna have really bad or really low water pressure. And I've talked to a lot of friends who've talked about the same thing. And I've suggested, well, check it first by turning off your water at the post and see if your pump kicks on. And if it does, you can kind of assume that the water pressure coming from the city side is overriding that check valve and telling the pump, you don't need to come on, I'm using city water supply. But the problem is, again, if that city water supply is too low, well then you're gonna have just you know miserable water pressure inside your coach. So that's the system. I've got quite a bit under $200 invested and that was including some filters too. So uh, it's not expensive. These canisters I have found for, uh, I believe, $40, $40. And actually, I think I got these for $24. There's a, a different version that's $42. And this company puts out one that's $24. And it just has to do with this head design. You don't really need to have the bracket on top. These stay very tight and very secure. They don't, there's really not any you know movement that goes on. If you were really, really interested in tricking the thing out yourself, you could put a metal plate on here, but they have commercial models of these and they're brutally expensive. They go anywhere from 400 all the way up to 700 and even as much as 800. So you're paying a lot of markup or you're paying somebody else to design this. In this case, if you're uh, a little bit ambitious and slightly industrious, you can put this together yourself. It takes very little tools, frankly. Uh, an open end adjustable wrench would work. That's kind of all you need. That's it. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all your comments and positive feedback. I appreciate it. Take care.